So what do we do today? Uh, there are uh, to, today. Ah, let me do everything in uh, sequence. Uh, we do have res uh, reserved Friday the room across the corridor, EML one eighty three, for additional group meeting. So whatever we decided for, and we can do. Uh, literature review meetings on Fridays. There is um, effort to complete uh, manuscripts based on Senebo uh, by the end of April, and it is a lot of load for editing, like we did last time. So even if uh, some of the authors didn't um, include themselves into the book, if we do it energetically, they finally realize how good it is. And uh, today is the last chance to do accent on uh, figures. Next time, I don't know, oh, we will decide at the end of the meeting, but next uh, Tuesday is the uh, spring break. Please lift your hands if you plan to travel. Or if you agree, is there a spring break next week? Yes. Yes? Do you stay in Fargo or you, you travel elsewhere? Or you haven't decided yet? I haven't even thought about it. Oh, okay. Uh, so it would be really great to have a meeting on, on Tuesday, but uh, it can be doubtful because uh, the rooms can be locked. So um, I, I will warn it and then inform everyone. If it will be available, we can make a meeting when everyone presents conclusions in, in written forms and uh, we go over. If not, we will postpone everything and make last month before submission really intense. And uh, we need to decide uh, who will present this Friday. Oh, we didn't reserve room yet. I did reserve. Which one? This? Across, no, across uh, this corridor. 4 p.m.? 4 p.m., yes. 1.83 a.m. Each, uh, each Friday. So here are the uh, materials for, for today. So it includes presentation by uh, John. And, uh, so for Friday meeting, I have two people out, right? So Jabbat and Braden are out, so they definitely cannot present. Um, and other two, my people also have already presented. Well, Levi, so we, 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 can, like, we can listen for Levi on well, Friday. Maybe, yeah, maybe if Levi would, would you be able to present Friday rather than today? I to save time for today so. meeting. Okay, and then you will have more time fine. for feedback. And so what uh, time is it on Friday? Four, four yes. Fargo time. It, it, it's it's three. Okay. Four p.m. Fargo time. Three p.m. Your time. So it is the same okay. link for online. And uh, okay. And if Aaron wants to volunteer. Well, if anyone wants to volunteer to present on Friday, it is open for a second presentation. No, we can and again, I just want to highlight, we present just introduction. Don't try to present the whole paper, right? Right? Because we don't have time for this. We do it really parts by parts. And for 20 minutes, it would be just focused on your introduction, right? Literature review, motivation, challenges, and overall the way how you are addressing these challenges being different from what have, have been already done in the field. It is what John is going to present, just ah. so that we will follow and uh, ask him well grounded questions. Everything just for John? No. Then uh, there are undergraduates, and hopefully some of them will come and participate. First uh, point in program is uh, John.
Okay. So, uh, John, would you like to um, share your screen, introduce yourself, and start presenting? Yes, I can do all things. Um, Okay. So you guys can see me. Um, I'm not going to be able to see you if you raise your hand, so just yell at me. Um, if you'd like to say something, then I'll switch back um, so I can at least see you guys. Okay. My name is Vogel, and I think we all know each other, but just in case you don't. Um, so there are two things about this that make me a little bit nervous. One is presenting work by with authors sitting in the room. Um, I'll do my best to at least go through the main points um, that I was thinking about. And then simply, um, there's just a lot of material, um, even more than I thought once I started looking. Uh, I'll try to keep it concise and um, build a logical approach. So what I talk about today is looking at the photocastidation um, of organics or other types of um, reactant molecules um, and to utilize um, cadmium and lead-based quantum dots functionalized um, ligands um, in terms of a photocatalyst uh, for these types of reactions. It's just the introduction. Um, and so with the outline, I just talked a little bit of motivation uh, and then go through some of the literature um, that I've been reading and looking at um, and try to highlight what I think um, within that literature um, is missing currently, what understanding uh, can we provide that no one else has, um, and then try to think about the methods um, that we're going to use to try and provide this information that could be useful um, to the rest of the community. So the first slide here on motivation um, have listed here, um, kind of like I said, we're trying to take a look at um, of lead and cadmium um, calcagenide quantum dots functionalized with um, either organic or metal organic uh, organs type of charge transfer um, within the system to be used for redox reactions. Um, and so um, it's been been known for that uh, ruthenium based by purine compounds um, um, have been used um, electrical or electron donation uh, type materials, but specifically we're looking for uh, complexes that are going to facilitate hole transitions um, following some type of photo excitation. And so that hole can be used in an uh, uh, oxidation action. Um, and so the top you can see one paper title, um, which was from um, uh, last year, this photocatalysis quantum dots and visible light. Um, and so why is it that this is uh, to be able to look at these of um, whole charge transfer events that lead to redox reactions? Um, well, one application is, of course, in uh, conversion of solar energy to electrical or chemical energy. Um, when you think of renewable energy field, um, people are always interested in how charge carriers are behaving, um, chemical energy look reaction, um, but also in other types of industries such as um, pharmaceuticals, um, like the food industry, there are retail manufacturers who are doing uh, things like with perfumes and colognes, um, so olfactory sensing of taking these, these whole Generalplexes and using them to do some type of um, organic molecule conversion. Um, and so um, the title of the top is, is talking about of alcohols into carbonyl compounds. So changing these alcohols into uh, either some type of aldehyde or ketone. Um, and it's also important because we want to. Hello? Hello? We yeah. don't have questions. Yes. So. Okay. Before you go deep to the whatever <laughs> applications and so on, you already mentioned charge transfer, right? And you also talked about mm -hmm. photocatalytic reactions. 
So probably would be good to first of all explain what do you mean by photocatalysis, right? How is it different from catalysis? Sure. And second, uh, why charge transfer really, like, like what's the role charge transfer is really taking for such catalysis? So in other words, probably focus on the process. Like okay. you were too short on just explaining the physics and you went deep to the applications while we really didn't get really the processes which you are trying to discuss here. Okay, so I will now treat this. Um, Maybe you have it later. I don't know, but it looks like. No, no, for that's fine. For people who are not familiar I, with this topic, it might be an issue, right? Okay. No, that's fine. I, I was thinking down a different path. Um, so, when we're talking about photocatalysis, just uh, versus catalysis, uh, what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to be able to take the energy stored in a photon of light um, coming into the system, um, having some type of optical transition uh, be induced by this this photon and study how the two carriers are relaxed uh, they're non radiatively um, be pulled out of the complex um, but this is also dependent on the type of optical transition that's induced by the photon um, and so in some of the literature review the examples of this but uh, we need to be considering optical transitions that occur, you know, quantum dot itself within the um, functional ligand itself, but also transitions that may be induced, um, like a metal to ligand charge transfer or ligand to metal charge transfer. And so what these is, types of what is a catalysis? Like which of the systems really doing the catalysis? So with um, and why do you the whole trans excitation. So with the photo excitation, the generation of uh, two char charge carriers an electron and hole, um, we want some type of charge transfer to get to a surface. And in this case, we're looking for a photo generated hole from the quantum dot to be migrated to um, one of the functional ligands. And as the charge carrier uh, is now sitting on the surface uh, out on the ligand, um, another chemical species can come in and interact with this now generated charge um, and produce some type of reaction or change the formula um, of the structure. I don't know. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Did you get what's really happening there? I mean, I can picture it just because I have an idea of already. <laughs> photocatalysis. Okay, but from my point of view, it looks like, like again, you talking about ligands, you're talking about charge on the surface. So why do you need ligands? So okay, you photo excite, you have your charge carriers. What's the, what's the role of ligands then? Like why you need the organic molecules there? So the role of the organic okay. ligands... For example, uh, if you look on a platinum catalysis, right? People just have platinum and it works as a mm. catalyst, right? Even without any mm. photo excitation. Here you have quantum dots and you have organic dye or something. So probably you need to explain why you need these two systems and what exactly doing catalysis in this system. So it's not really the quantum dot was, well, maybe, I don't know, but, but looks like there might be several options. So you need to figure out what exactly is the system which is used for catalysis in this case. Like for example, if you're considering water, like, like again, you can go for many, many, many reactions, right? Probably it's a good idea to focus on one. Let's say if we go with water oxidation, just focus on one, right? So for what oxidation, what do you need to make it happen, to oxidize the water to oxygen? If you break it into two reactions, what do you need for, for this reaction? Well, you're going to need the charges and the energy to, to uh, break the bonds with the water How many? and then stabilize. Yeah, yeah. To break the bond, you need really to have, like, it's oxidation. So you need to, if it's oxidation, do you need, do you need electrons? Or you release electrons? Or you need holes. Uh, yeah. Well, oxidation is the loss of electrons. And so depending if you're How many generating the oxygen. 
Um, well, so it'd be two water molecules to produce two H2 molecules and one O2 molecule. So let's see, four electrons. Has, has to be released, right? Mm -hmm. So to make this reaction happen, you need really kind of a, a source, <laughs> or oh, not a source, how you say, something where these electrons will go from water molecules, right? right? We'll provide this well, electron. You need to inject holes into water molecules. Or you can from, say inject from, from holes, from yeah. So take electrons okay. from water molecules or inject holes, right? And actually, so, this, so you... this is a role. This is a role. And again, it can be done through the surface, right? But in this setup, which you will be talking later, it's not really the surface of the quantum dot, which is providing this positive charge to release electrons from water molecules. It's actually the, the dye, which having a metal positively charged ion, right? Which will be changing the oxidation state first. Let's say mm -hmm. if you go with ruthenium complex and your charge is shifting from two plus to let's say three plus or maybe even four plus, which will mm -hmm. kind of will will take two, at least two electrons if it's four plus or at least one electron if it's three plus, right? Returning back to its neutral, I mean neutral, uh, the most how say the most stable form two plus ruthenium complex, right? Yep. So okay. because you can also then... think the confusion is because again you can think that. You just have a quantum dot working as a oxidizer or photo oxidizer, right? Why do you need this mm -hmm. this uh, organic dye on a surface? And okay. technically, so, you probably can't find literature where they use just quantum dots. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. I saw several. Yeah, yeah. But, so, but you, you, if you want to go, you need to be a little bit more focused, right? And then really yeah. make set up very clear how your system looks like. Okay. Well. Um, I'll be more, I'll clarify what I mean by surface. When I said surface, I'm realizing the surface is now the ligand itself. So you're, you're transferring the hole from the quantum to the, and then there's a reaction on the surface of the ligand end, not, okay. so yeah. that, that's the way I was thinking about it. I'll make yeah. that more clear. Yeah. Okay. So one of the big, because big benefits of also having a ligand on a dot is um, quantum dots um, can be known to have a high energy uh, band gap and so to enhance or increase absorption in a visible light range, um, you're going to um, add these type of ligands to the surface um, that or introduce new electronic states uh, that provide new paths for optical absorption um, within uh, the total uh, quantum dot complex. Um, this is kind of um, the introduction as to... But then my Water question is, materials. okay, if we have metal organic complexes, which can already work as a photo oxidizers, right? You just photo excite them and attach them to the, mm -hmm. to the surface, which can be titanium dioxide surface, to the bulk surface, right? So you photo right. and this is Gretzel cells or something like that. You photo excite the dye, the electron after photo oxidation of the dye goes to the, to the substrate providing yes. again positive charge on a on a molecule which will work yep. as a catalysis right because you need and to in this case you say in order well, to free dox. well competition with what what well, does so it's you know well, well, where you have you can have renation events um, or you can have energy transfer i mean where you have both charge areas migrate to the same material um, and so these these transfers and these charge separation lifetimes um, are yeah, kind of but what this is well, this is already well studied for Gretzel yeah. types of systems, right? Let's say titanium dioxide surface where it has the homoluma and how it's aligned to this or that molecules are well known already, right? So again, the question is why do you switch into the quantum dots, especially if you increase it? Like titanium dioxide have already the big band gap. If you, mm -hmm. if you go to nanomaterials materials of titanium dioxide, it would be even larger. So what's the reason to switch to the quantum dots in this case? What do you think? Why really we need them quantum dots instead of bulk surface? Looks like it's less beneficial. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think once you switch to quantum dots, you're now generate, well, now within the material, you have this many more charge generation centers. Um, so you have a breaking apart of 
or both materials. You can have, you know, a single electron trapped within a quantum dot with a hole migrating to the ligands. Um, and so instead of, of having um, um, an entire surface where you can have these charges going uh, back and forth from ligand to bulk, um, you know, it's a reduction of excited state charge carriers that can lead to uh, recombination. So, John, you don't question. Like that, eh? Yeah. Uh, would it be prudent to say that you introduce states that are aligned properly so you have the electron and hole drive to different portions of the molecule, which then can go undergo reactions? Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, that's that's the whole point of putting a ligand on the quantum dot, is so that you can you can adjust those states so that you have the charge separation, or the charge transfers. And okay. So it's so it's more important to have the alignment of the ligands correct instead of decreasing the optical properties due to photo exciting the ligand by itself or the quantum dot. Yeah, I would say so. Well, okay. I would agree with you. Technically, it's the main point is that we don't want to excite the dye. And this is why we don't go in the same way as Gretzel type materials, right? Because what excitation of organic ligands usually they have they have the uh, low time for how it calls photo time photo well anyway so they experience photo, degra photo degradation oh. no 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 it means you can excite it okay. once twice and then the molecule will be degraded right because it's uh, it's just a molecule okay, the molecule might dissociate under the uh, when, when you use it in uh, many 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 cycles of photo excitation so and this is well known for any organic molecules so the whole point is instead instead of exciting the dye, the organic molecule, you excite the quantum dot, the inorganic compound, right? Mm -hmm. And again, this is a big difference why this system rather than bulk with a dye, because bulk with a dye, you excite the dye and then you have electron transfer. Here you excite the quantum dot and you're getting a lot of benefits of it. You said, well, quantum dot has a larger band gap, but you can change it with the size Right, just increase mm -hmm. the size of the quantum dot and you can, can make the band gap smaller. And of course, start with a material which already has a small band gap, like bulk materials, which doesn't have a large band gap. Don't start with titanium dioxide. Use something, lead selenide, for example, which has very small band gap, 0.2 electron volts, right? So it's in the infrared range. And then increasing, I mean, decreasing the size, you increase, you can tune the band gap to the to the energy range where you want to. So it's much easier to, well, I would say, there is of course tunability in the gaps for the organic dyes as well. You just modify the side ligands, conjug uh, the, 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 the conjugation and so on, right? But quantum dots also will, uh, the size of the nanomaterials will also provide you this tunability, which is very easy to do in the labs, right? So, but you will mm -hmm. increase stability of such system when you excite the inorganic material. So therefore the stability will be increased. Also they have much higher, um, the much higher efficiency of absorption light comparing to the dye materials. So it means mm -hmm. the surface, yeah. how we call them, the surface optical surface area. Uh, uh, cross section. Like cross section. Cross -section. Cross -section. Yeah. Optical cross section is higher for quantum dots rather than dyes. So, like you have, again, in your introduction, you have kind of explained why you're choosing this system, first of all, right? And again, there are many setups which you can do to create this photocatalytic catalytic materials, right? And they are known. Mm -hmm. And you can, of course, like you, you, you probably didn't, I don't know, maybe you will mention it later, but kind of. Like you can go with a bulk material. You can use quantum dots by themselves. Being photex, uh, using instead of dye, you can use quantum dot on the surface of titanium dioxide, for example, right? And then you photex excite quantum dot, and again, we'll have uh, energy transfer and try to see maybe surface of charge surface of quantum dot can work as a catalytic agent, right? 
So there are, mm -hmm. but 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 again, you from this broad way, uh, very broad uh, type of materials, you want to focus your research on something very specific, this specific mat uh, system, and you need to justify from literature what are the benefits of this system, right? Okay. It's like this was kind of lost <laughs> in your presentation, and benefits deals with the processes which which are involved in a in a catalytic, right? So this is. First, photo excitation, and of course, it means where you excite and how much stable your system is, photo stable. And second, efficiency of charge transfer and why you need charge transfer. Again, that's, that's again, you, you need to talk about uh, overall catalytic uh, reaction, right? And for, uh, oxidation or whatever. In our case, it's oxidation, right? So that's why you need to create these charges and you need to create positive charge, which, which again returns us back that if you photo excite the quantum dot, then it's not electron transfer, it has to be whole transfer, right? So you need mm -hmm. to focus not only on the efficiency of charge transfer, so you really want to have a specific direction. You want to have positive charge go to the die, not the negative. And if negative goes, it's bad, right? You, you really, it means your setup doesn't work, or like energy transfer, competing processes. Okay, so this thing has to be, re you, you need to resort about, uh, rethink about it and uh, probably also add some, some, some papers for the discussion on these processes and um, different types of materials which can be used and again justifying your approach for this specific system. And then you can go with your applications overall. <laughs> or whatever you order, you can start with your application, but looks like this part is missed. Well, I look on your slides, it looks like you never really go to that part. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so with some of the things that we're interested in um, that, I'll, that I'll try to touch on with uh, some of the papers that I'm gonna highlight in the literature review, um, so there's a, there's a range of um, quantum dots that have um, previously been studied um, and so I, I mentioned uh, cadmium and lead uh, calcogenide uh, type quantum dots. Um, there's also cadmium oxide and also zinc oxide uh, quantum dots that have also been previously studied. Um, and so like we mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, depending on quantum dot composition, your quantum dot size, um, it's gonna provide a unique electronic structure. Uh, so it's the tunability um, with uh, specific wavelengths uh, that we might be interested in. Um, and they're also going to have uh, different surface reactivities and the way they're going to have, uh, specific ligands um, being functionalized onto their surfaces. Um, uh, second important point is the type of surface functionalization. So which types of ligands um, are we going to be looking at? Um, so each of the dyes are going to contribute um, electronic states that are going to have a varying alignment with the electronic states um, of the quantum dot. And so this is gonna be one of the most important points in um, the ability to drive some type of whole transfer from the quantum dot to one of the ligands. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, they're going to, uh, more specifically, we're gonna be focusing on metal organic complexes. Um, and some of the characteristics that we already discussed um, because we were looking for absorption occurring solely in the quantum dot, um, we need a visible range, ideally, for optical absorption um, to uh, collect the most light that we can. Um, we want to keep these things stable. Um, but what's also important in these use and also in the ligands themselves is the overall charge um, that's found to be on the ligands. And so um, we'll touch on some of the the cases and how charged uh, ligands can actually enhance um, hold your shifting of electronic states and uh, energies, um, and also how those shifting um, states due to this added charge um, is going to uh, relocalize some of the uh, density for the HOMO levels um, and looking at some type of hybridization between the quantum dots um, and uh, the ligand systems and also um, solely ligand going from just um, say like the mill compound um, 
having a hybridization with uh, um, the orbitals uh, also on themselves. Um, I'm also going to touch just a little bit on the solvent effects um, that have been studied. Still trying to draw up a plan on, on how we're going to approach uh, solvent effects um, and, and what that's going to look like for now. Also, earlier we just talked a little bit about different competing mechanisms. Um, ideally, we're looking for for whole charge transfer from the quantum from the ligand. Um, what mechanisms with this um, are going to be um, energy transfers. Um, depending on the electronic structure, we may run into things such as trap states, um, uh, different rates of non relaxation, uh, but also um, with trap states it leads to non radiative recombination. Um, and so those are all things we have to kind of keep in mind as we're trying to make a plan uh, to what systems we, we specifically want to start with. So um, this first slide is just, an, um, it's just an image of one of the sensitizing molecules, I believe it was K77 from one of Grotzel's first DSSC cells. Um, and so we've already mentioned that we're not looking um, for the same type of effect um, used in DSSC um, for functional absorption of the complex, um, but an image of, of kind of some of the background for where these ruthenium complexes come from. And so um, you can see there's groups um, added on this ruthenium complex, um, and I, I want to highlight those, um, as well as these uh, carboxylic acid groups, um, as, as those are going to be important going forward to how the ligands are binding on One of the first things I want to mention um, was some work done by uh, Klimov and his group. Um, so uh, what I wanted to pull, pull this paper and highlight for you guys is look at um, the different modifications someone can can put on complex to modify the electronic structure of the ligand and how it's going to interact with the electronic structure um, of what we're in. Um, and see that um, going from left to right, there's just a, a bipyridine complex, um, but then you're also adding in um, one and two um, carboxylic acid groups. And so the addition of these carboxylic acid groups that are not there protonated um, is going to affect the overall charge of them and how the energetic, uh, the states energetically align with those of the quantum dot. And so that was, um, it was kind of a shorter communication paper, but that was that was one of the main highlights, showing the shift in energy levels due to um, specific of ligand. And so, uh, this type of idea um, was taken and done in collaboration. So, uh, Professor Kalina um, and coworkers they looked at um, the both experimentally. Um, through uh, calculation um, and looking at the, these different derivative uh, bipyridine complexes. Uh, and so uh, one of the main things that I wanted to highlight um, out of this paper, and that's something that's going to be going, or going to be important forward, is how when you're looking at these bipyridine complex, uh, how the carboxylic acids are binding to the metal ions on the quantum dot in some this kind of top left figure called bipyridine derivative um, and then the bottom left image um, is showing three different variations of how these carboxylic acid groups um, can bind to um, case they were looking at cadmium cell and so uh, the state which is the metal center um, a bridge a system where you have both oxygens from the acid binding to two metal centers, and then you have a chelating ligand um, where both oxygens are binding to one metal center. Um, from um, their work, the main point that I want to highlight, at least for now, is that um, the most uh, found the, the binding method uh, was found to be bridging. So you have um, both oxygens 
the two separate mill ions. Um, and so I don't know if you'd like to add anything, Professor Kalina, um, but that's kind of what I wanted to highlight out of this paper, at least for now. And so um, one of the next papers um, was also done, uh, it's computational work done by Professor Kalina, um, co-workers. Um, again, looking at uh, variations on uh, substitution in these bipyridives and how they're binding. So you can see um, on the top left imaging, you're looking at a uh, bipyridin complex, then acetylic acid, um, and then you're adding two carboxylic acids in methyl group. And so this system, um, and looking again at the three different methods um, of binding uh, within the systems. So um, also looking at uh, some of the zinc oxide materials as well. Um, and I think I put another, oh, thought I had a little more image. And so um, the uh, image, as you can see, um, I thought it went up there. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to highlight here was uh, about our discussion of how the energies of the states between uh, the quantum dot and the ligands are interacting with each other and their relative positioning. Um, and so you can see in this image here, um, the red states correspond to those of the quantum dot, the blue states correspond to those uh, um, the ligands itself. When you're exciting, um, you know, from, from the quantum dot to the quantum dot, the ligand energy states are buried um, far down in the valence band. There's no possibility for any type of hole transfer going on. The ligand and that's our main goal in looking at systems. And so absorption occurring on the ligand itself um, is resulting in, uh, you know, some type of high energy excitation, the conduction, um, but still, um, Electron back down into the quantum dot. So, um, these, with these types of systems um, set up, um, that we'll see um, a little bit later in, in some of these. And, and so, more um, papers. So, they're, they're still looking at all these different types of, of ideas. The one on the 2013 um, is looking at optical characterizations of these whole extractor materials for cad selenide quantum dots. Um, so, I, yeah. I think we have a technical issue. Your slide is not really changing for a couple of minutes, and I think you were talking about different slide now. Uh, right? We're still on Langmuir. Yeah, we, we have 2011 uh, Langmuir. <laughs> okay. Um, Stop sharing and I'll, I'll restart again and see if that helps. We all, John, we all have your slides printed. But they're very little. It's mm -hmm. really hard to see. <laughs> Even images yep. is hard yep. to see. And, and I think I, and I, uh, well, this is a version probably, I think, what you have as well. So. Want to share anymore? Mm, I would say it's, it looks right. like you guys. And we also have probably it's uh, not very fast internet or something. Yeah, it is not a. Which date is today? Is it 13? No? <laughs> Six. Okay, should be right. This is annoying. Um, well, uh, then, then stop sharing and just keep talking. And then just tell us which yeah. slide we need to go, right? So we can navigate well, through the through the prints then. Okay. Um, Title of the paper. 
my work since you I think page pages are not numbers. <laughs> I'll say that's why as you say on the on the file I have everything should be numbered and there's gonna be um, some different things. I'm gonna let see if I can load the in into my PowerPoint. Um, okay. But well, are you, so are you in which 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 uh, journal are you now? Um, let's year? go past. Let's go past Langmuir. So we're still in 2013, looking at the paper for PC. Um, so which one? Physical chemistry C. Okay. And so is there are two of them: Very. 2013, 2013 physical chemistry C. Maybe maybe okay. give us a title. That's all studies of grounds of quantum dots function by ruthenium two polypyridine. Okay. So, so here, this is what I was just talking about a little bit earlier, um, and you guys couldn't see. Uh, um, uh, so, so instead of looking um, only at just the the lead or the um, cadmium selenide, now we're switching and looking at uh, lead selenide and zinc oxide uh, materials. With these types of additives. Um, and how varying uh, monodentate chelating and bridging ligands um, play a role in uh, the densities of the electronic structure. And so um, one of the main things I wanted to do um, was that uh, we're looking solely at um, uh, carboxylic acid um, type linker groups um, onto, uh, yeah, sorry, the lead selenide. Um, and so excitations uh, from the quantum dot to the quantum dot are no longer, well, they're not going to provide any type of hold a charge train because the late states is above the top of the valence band. Um, so there's nowhere for the hole to go to on the ligand. Um, and uh, a ligand to ligand type excitation um, promotes um, a relaxation of the electron um, from the ligand back down into uh, the bulk of the, or the, to the quantum dot itself. Um, and so, just really the very, very material choice for the, for the quantum dots is highly important in directing the type of charge transfer that you want to have in X. Um, the next paper, I have in here, um, 13, um, well, which, which do you guys have on your page? We have all, what do you mean? Was, was there a second JP, right? You said that there were two on page. We have 2013 physical chemistry C for ultra fast whole electron transfer dynamics in Kessel and Kessel-Net quantum dots synthesized by Pirogelo Pirogelo Red, a super okay. system. So, John, I think there's also a photo induced formation of bithiophene radicals. Oh. It's in the same slide, yes. Oh, we, he, he's, he's frozen, I think. Yeah, yeah, we have problems with connection. Probably. So our internet is fine, right? Our internet is fine because we have no problems with Levi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we see you. <laughs> oh, there he is. But he's still frozen. John, oh, no. are you here? No. He was colored, now he's bit. black. And, oh, now he's back. Uh, John, so there is the photo-induced okay. uh, formation of biothiophene radical cation via whole transfer process in cadmium sulfide nanos. Oh, he, he's freezing again. Okay. Yep. I I know we're at. Uh, 
uh, I'm just pulling up the old. Uh, um, okay. I'm going to do formation of um, this was something that, um, again, they're using, well, now it, they're looking at cadmium sulfide nanocrystals uh, and these bithiophene uh, materials. Um, is basically uh, the smallest type of thiophene um, that they can use. Um, and it's also known to be an electron donor. So, uh, and, uh, <laughs> so what should we do? Should we switch to Levi and then leave him for, for, for Friday? Well, it's, it's already time. An hour I already have a, I have a meeting in five minutes. Okay. Well, it's your call. So what we're going to do now? Because John, I think it's really very painful to listen to. John, can you summarize your conclusions? <laughs> summarize your conclusions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Well, please, okay. Yeah. That's fine. I'll just do that. Slowly. <laughs> We just cannot really listen to you because can... you you interrupted, right? So like Cut. we we hear only second word. Each second word cutting is, out is cutting out, yeah. And you freezing again. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about my life. What? <laughs> okay, I John, can so you hear there us? things as yes. Yes? What about now? Yes. Okay. Since it's time. I, I think uh, we should thank John for a for very important well, effort. Let's let's try on Friday. Starting with these slides, uh, whatever it is. So one of these 2013 slides for By beat Thaifin. Okay. It is the last word that I was able to to understand. And hopefully okay. What's going on with your internet? It looks like it's a problem with your internet. Is it so slow? I don't. I don't know. Like, um, it's been fine the last few weeks because I I went and got it, and I haven't had the issue with it until today. Is it I don't, possible I, I don't, to fix it? I don't know it? what this. Um, it... I mean, I can reset my I can reset my router and okay. I can be. I've been... Try. Try to do something with it by Friday, because otherwise it's really very painful to listen when we can hear only each second word, maybe each said. <laughs> okay. Okay, but thank John. So uh, we will continue the uh, presentations on uh, Friday. So uh, there are, definitely there is a Levi, there, there are leftovers of, of John. Leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe there will be another volunteer. Maybe, maybe not. Make no. a first approximation, like good oh. introduction. Okay, and uh, now let's just uh, practice helping each other on um, the literature review. So you do have the forms. So you, you read through the figures and try to, um, if, if time is up, and time will fly very quick, um, just mark on, on this uh, list what you like or what you dislike in the um, figures of the manuscript they're looking. If you have more time, you can write with red or whatever color on, uh, on the manuscript itself and uh, generate feedback that on your opinion you've improved it and then um, tear it on the pieces. Right now it's bundled together, but we, we need to staple only one piece at once and then return to the author. So that author reads your feedback and improves whatever is uh, going on. Can, can you hear me better now? Yes. And we can see you better <laughs> as well. Can you better? Are, okay. you, are you connected to wired internet instead of wireless? Yes, I, think, I, yeah, I plugged in. Need to yeah, do I'm, this yeah way. I'm back to the couch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, long live the couch. Long. 
Um, it's okay. Let, let's try Friday with a couch. Uh, okay. Well, I otherwise, mean, I was going to say, do you, do you want me? Can I can I give my con kind of main conclusions, and then maybe I'll just come up Friday, and we can just discuss the rest of it in person. Yeah, yeah. You can express your conclusions. Okay. Um, so I guess so. So kind of the two main big points from all the literature that I skipped was that, so there's a lot of effort um, that's already been done in understanding um, like the oxidation precursor, precursors and looking at how different organic compounds um, react under redox conditions. Um, and there's also been a lot of effort already put into understanding electronic structures um, of ruthenium uh, derivatives and how they, um, interact with the electronic states of um, different quantum dot materials. And so how is it that we can combine um, those two uh, main types of understanding uh, to build the best type of photocatalytic complex um, possible? And so um, what we're looking to do is basically um, uh, take some of the, the understandings from what provides the best type of, of orbital overlap between a quantum dot and a ligand um, what type of, of linker agents between um, the ligand metal center and the quantum dot um, to provide this type of whole charge transfer and then go ahead and run dynamic simulations to calculate the rates of these whole transfers and compare them to experiment because that's, that's one of the things um, um, that's missing. Um, there are specific mechanisms that they can measure um, experimentally, um, but sometimes due to uh, the lifetime of these types of transitions, um, you know, there's there's limits on how fast the spectroscopy is, um, and so we can provide insights onto, uh, you know, really ultra fast systems, but also to um, un trying to understand some of the, the chemical mechanisms that lead to these types of ultra fast systems, um, and also uh, exploring systems that haven't been uh, studied experimentally yet. Um, and so looking between ruthenium and iridium complexes, um, organic, organometallic complexes, uh, to try and increase this type of whole charge transfer um, between quantum dot and a dye. And then, um, so kind of how to address what I just mentioned. Um, so uh, taking all this information that I was trying to present today um, and, and building these new models um, that, you know, um, probably have negatively charged um, overall ligands, ideally have um, uh, sulfonate groups attaching to the surface um, because that's that's what's kind of been trending um, even in, in some of the newer literature. Um, and then uh, taking all this knowledge of, like I said, these binding groups um, and these ligands um, and just trying to wrap it all up, up and use, use our methods which haven't been done yet um, I know there's been some some non-abiotic work uh, done in Oleg's group, um, but it hasn't really been for this type of process. It's been been mainly looking at um, just some of the quantum dot materials themselves, and so um, providing this type of non-abiotic uh, relaxation dynamics and uh, charge carrier lifetimes for specific uh, charge transfer events is is what we'll be able to give um, to the community. So that's. Those were kind of my main conclusions, and like I said, we can go over more details, I guess, when I come up on Friday or, or yeah. from the okay. couch on Friday. Just a note to you, maybe maybe it would be better if you can focus, again, thinking about that you cannot simulate everything, right? So you need right. to start with some structures which you probably look in on the literature to just mm -hmm. give a few, maybe two, three structures. Okay. I don't know, four is maximum probably, which you think is the best choice to start with, right? Like this, especially in the terms of ligand, what kind of ligand modification you want to check, right? Yep. And maybe wherever your candidate for, for quantum dots, would it be cat sulfide? Probably looks like you have a lot of papers on cat sulfide or something. And again, this would be finalizing the discussion on the literature now, you know, we know this information from literature, you can focus now saying, oh, this is open questions and we will address this question specifically looking on this ligand, right? Over on this yep. dye, with this metal, with these ligands, or maybe modifying these ligands, putting these this groups on this basic ligand, right? And on the surface of this uh, type of quantum dot. 
So okay. for Friday, if you can really focus in on a specific ligands and specific uh, a few samples of specific systems, I think would be really great. Okay. Should we no, uh, no, 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 I have a question. Oh. John? Yes. Um, so it's for, for my curiosity, I, I, it, it may be a very silly question, but uh, if you're looking on um, photoelectrochemical reactions, they typically mm -hmm. are closed cycle with oxidation and reduction side. Right, looking and, at cyclic uh, potentiometry from, graphs. From what you were showing, it looks like you are putting only one type of ligand to my understanding mostly for oxidation part of reaction. How about the second part? Does it mean that you want to place ligands of two types or quantum dot is absorbed to something else? How do you see it? Um, so uh, the number of ligands on a surface and multiple ligands on the surface are all going to play a role um, in in the overall ability for transferring specific charges. Um, and so um, I know in, in reading some of those, you know, in going up upwards of, well, one, it depends on the quantum dot size, um, you know, how, how small is it really going to be and how many, um, how many uh, surface ligands can you load it with. Um, but it's also that, I mean, the rest of the surface has to be passivated with something um, because otherwise you're going to have some type of probable structural uh, modification that isn't correct. Um, if, is, so if you're, if you're asking about, you know, putting two different ligands on both with one being an electron acceptor and, and one being a whole acceptor, um, I don't, I don't know, maybe it could be interesting. Um, but, but if I missed the kind of point of your question, then uh, I apologize. I, I, I think his question was what you're going to do with the second part of the reaction, right? Uh, oh, what am I going to do with the reduction, reduction. Reduction. Okay. Reduction. And the um, answer to this question, uh, you kind of already said, technically, yeah, we might. And there, there are some papers. Actually, I was reviewing recently a paper. I think Jabbit was helping me. Or maybe not. Don't remember. Maybe I just did by myself. So they use Ketzel 5 quantum dots for the photo oxidation of um, uh, how it calls uh, something dealing with. Uh, blue? No, no, no. no it's, it deals with uh, uh, oxidation reaction for. Uh, something done from the wood. Okay, lignin. Ling, lignin. 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 Kind of to, to okay. cut it into the smaller uh, smaller size uh, carbon-based uh, whatever molecules, right? For, mm -hmm. for, for the use in, uh, in, in gas or whatever. Um, gasoline, I mean, and, and so on. So, so in this case, they were claiming that they were able to have, it's not for, I mean, it's for the oxidation, but not for the oxidation of water. It's completely different uh, molecule and completely different reaction and mechanism of reaction. And they were showing that this reaction happens extremely quick, means hours, and it was quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, the reason why is it, and, and much more efficiently comparing to the standard ways of uh, standard catalysis, uh, because they take completely different mechanism, and in this mechanism, both electrons and holes were used. Like one intermediate okay. was created through the electron transfer, and then another intermediate was created from hole transfer, and kind of because both carriers were used from the photo excited quantum dots, the overall, so you're losing really nothing, and the overall efficiency was really very high, and mechanism was completely different and much quicker mm -hmm. comparing to the other things. So technically, you can think about some applications when you can employ, employ both electron and hole uh, transfer, means both kind of reduction and oxidation um, reactions to a Q on the same quantum dot surface, right? Maybe again, mm -hmm. playing with different ligands or depends on the a, on a type of the reaction you want to. Another yeah. approach would be just split it, right? Same as in many cases, you really can hold separately the part which is working on oxidation and the part which is working on a, um, a reduction, right? Kind of you, you make them separately and then you recombine it kind of together in a mm -hmm. circle. Mm -hmm. So again, this yeah. this technology is also known, and you can you can find how people 
address these questions. Or, for example, they are aware of work when they use uh, nanorods of cat sulfide yeah. nanorods, and then they have a catalysis on one side for the reduction and attaching to the other side something dealing with oxidation and you kind of separate mm -hmm. it through the size of your nanorods. Uh, so, so in other words, there are different approaches, and and again, you can overview it means you need to know about them, right? If you yeah. work in this area, yeah. but you, of course, for for this specific research, you can you have to focus on something specific. You cannot do calculations for everything. Yeah. Did we answer your question? Yes, me? yes, you did. Yeah. Okay. Well, and and like even a, even a couple of the newer papers. Um, so, with their catalysis, they're they're putting nickel absorbing to the surface of the quantum dot kind of in, in small quantities. And so they're getting an electron drive. I mean, it's, it gives an overtension to put the electron on the nickel and allows the hole to transfer out um, and react with, um, um, I think they had like um, ascorbic acid or something in, in their reactions. So you're saying they adopt with a nickel or it's just attached atom on the, on the surface? It's it's attached um, on it's attached on it. Yep. Um, Interesting. Let me, let me see. Well, like if you have was, this paper, we probably can discuss it. On yeah. Friday. So, well, it was actually it was actually both of these papers. I don't know if you can see um, my PowerPoint screen. Now we do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so there were two papers that are actually doing it. So, one of them was one you had sent me this this um, you know down on the bottom the oxidation of the alcohols, um, but then this other other paper um, looking at you know this nickel generating these whole trap states. And so the schematic is kind of this top left. Um, and so that, you know, the whole transfer um, to like this whole trap state and the electron transfer to uh, this nickel state are two processes that have been promoted and, and every everything else has basically been reduced um, within the material. And so, um, yeah, that, that came up in a couple different papers. Um, and so I don't know if that's something we'll want to look at in, oh. you know, just putting a, like is, a nickel atom or something. But this is definitely interesting, especially taking mm -hmm. into account that this is kind of really very recent paper, right? So this is mm -hmm. probably also we can easily model with our models and something new to add to the things which we have already done before, right? So I would yeah. say, yeah, this is for sure very interesting. And again, you have to from this big, broad approach to, the, to seeing everything, what, well, maybe not everything, but at least uh, as much as possible from this review, which you have already done, right? So then mm -hmm. really try to focus and say, well, you choose just from your point of view, because you really, like, I didn't read some of these papers, especially the, re the recent ones, right? But you did. Mm -hmm. So based on this, make your own conclusions that you think would be really kind of our first priority to check, right? Let's say these yeah. structures, for this ligands, for this surface, maybe attaching nickel looks like might be also interesting idea to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's finish yeah. it on Friday. Okay. Okay. Let's well, thank John once again. Oh no, we applauded already. We applauded. Um, Brandon Gifford was watching recordings of uh, our last meeting, and he um, he liked how how we applauded. He, he left the <laughs> comment, right? Comment, yes. John? Yes. And you can download the materials that we are overviewing now online okay. through the links. Okay. Well, then um, I'm going to go back to my desk. So. We'll see once if the connection lasts, but if not, I'll send uh, my scanned comments uh, yeah. back to the authors. Yeah, so. I think it's, it's okay if you kind of get out from the connection. Not, not <laughs> okay. okay, thank you for right. the presentation. See you Friday. Yep. See you.
area right now. So here is the chest just to show optimal structures. This is unoptimized because, because it's clearly shown what is ABC. But then it would be interesting to see how this guy is changing when we optimize it. You know, the feature figures you have to describe and not just describe, but also, and like describe means just, oh, we were doing this and this, as shown in figure one, it shows, and then you just describe, right, what is showing there. But you also need to analyze, and for analysis means, like you say, oh, as you see, this optimization results on a significant change, because, those, like, especially these structures are not as beautiful anymore, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And this one probably not so bad, right? Yeah, it just kind of depends on I have well, again, you choose, you need to choose representative. Right? So that's why whatever your choice of solvent, if you want, you can up to you, right? And then, of course, if you use, if you say optimize structures, then you probably need to say in this solvent, right? And I would say probably use the same solvent for both of them. And I would, I don't know, we, I'm still kind of, Right not sure, like but you have a factor of four single figures, right? Yeah, yeah I have some. I'm, I what have you know. were shown in a board. That's up for, we probably passed it. Oh, you didn't show any single one? But I think I saw it. Or maybe it was those. And again, this yeah. is for fully preserved, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. So, um, we, we still didn't decide the whether we go with this. Full, like, I'm still uh, thinking we probably go just uh, with a... A cheap model can approximate. Um, also, issue. I went to so that's like one narrative. And, mm -hmm. um, so we try and follow the time for just today. Just, it's uh, under the main thing. Yeah, keep so that in mind whenever I'm talking to them. Yeah. That yeah. tomorrow. So. Um, but, but, but again, so we still kind of in the process of sort of deciding whether we go, like, did I, see, I didn't see this a paper from Arthur. I just forgot. I will try to remember it. I will send you the Nadine's paper, right? And again, so two things what we can do. We can add, again, maybe not all of your results, but we can add some of your fully persuaded results and cancel by Vacuum versus uh, Asinomi trial. Together, we specifically do so and cancel. Cancel, and then we're comparing effect of different solvents, right? And again, talking about this network formation. And then the effect on the absorption spectra in cancel or optical properties, right? Cancel and I versus lexal and I. 
Okay. And it looks like they're not making body different, but there might be some difference as well. Right? Yeah. So, so we, we can go either this way, and then this then yeah, yeah. will be connected to this paper. Or we can go already? this, yes. like, putting oh, everything okay. together, like exactly. single, like longer one, uh, because then we will have what we will have absorption spectra and uh, close to f one when half. And again, you were showing it to me already, I remember. Probably, and I think it's also the most popular, right? The most representative one yeah. for your dose when you have a single app, yes. uh, a single yeah. unit, right? Yeah. So it's like this is very easy to add, and you have to add it anyway. Yeah, I was, I have, I was going to. Yeah, I just, so I would say time. after figure four, right? You probably yes, need to have uh, five would be your dose with maybe a few structures, right? Justify. With a few okay, representative yeah. structures, no. and you have it. Was four. Just yeah, so you don't need really. Uh, structures uh, with one beacon, right? Yeah. And kind of the same so for the upper uh, fix six would be for the spectra fix six for this absorption yeah, spectra. The and again, I would suggest probably choose exactly the same structures as you show in the dose. Right? And then the other ones you can add so to the supplemental materials, all your other home, all your doses, and all your absorption just spectra. Just or you can show not all, you can show only yes. those which then are not shown. Of so five yeah. and figure six. Why not to see yeah. Um, and then this would be the end of the story, if we have enough things to say. Okay, and then if I wanted to... Or, or, or we really make it longer and say, well, here is one ligand, now we're adding the second ligand, right, and see what's going on. Uh, so many of them, yeah. completely fully pacific. And again, talking about network, like you already mentioned here, the yeah. one of the structures that I, I didn't add it on, on, on the first one. No, no, no. I will, we will go through it very quickly. Okay. But, but as I said, like right now, make it as one, as everything as one story, right? Uh -huh. But when we will have all figures, and again, looking at them for me would be very easy to see for you, probably too. Uh, would be very easy to see that oh, looks like we have enough. Like this is really very nice story by itself. Like uh, one, two points. Good enough. Like I, so I, I'm not sure if right now it's really good enough. Physical meaning. Yeah, oh, okay. But that's why I said, like, hopefully, yeah. because I think your dose was pretty much showing all the trash, right? Yeah. And hopefully, we will see pretty much the same trash in your absorption. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I, can, I can do that. It's going to take me a while because the two VFT oh. is hard for me. And again, so. don't worry, we are trying to push, push with these deadlines, whatever he's saying. Yes. Yeah, but that is it. Yes, that's my fault. You're not going to submit it to the absorption in this way. So that's why. But it's, it's good to have a deadline because otherwise it will be never happening, right? So we need, we need to push ourselves. Um, so that's why I said that. It's a soft deadline, right? So don't worry. But but these things you probably can work on Thursday. Yeah, um, because you have, if you have all that, it's yeah. really just have making the nice outside. figures. Mm -hmm. And, and so looks like again, if I remember, we discussed it with your dose, and it was pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah. Idea, yeah. if this, yeah. then so that, if that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And again, those is where kind of in agreement what we were expecting. So, so I would definitely say focus on Thursday on this one, and probably also change go through the changes which I have here. And this one, just leave it, and this would be like it's good to even mark it with a different number. Oh yeah, I had no idea what. And then absorption spectra for this one, I would say we like like we might probably retake it and put it in the other paper, or maybe stay here, and then it would be just get something like that. In other words, in other words, we could be as a two pages with your whole thing, or just one. So, but and then yeah, I don't know what I did wrong. So well, just that's why I said I just become fluid, right? Yeah, that's it. Might be. I don't know. I have a feeling maybe you switched. Maybe you switched to the different bases. I mean, not bases. To the different functional, no. No, because it's too much blue shifted. And I can explain can why. Like you said, like you, my, my, my email didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> but look, so, um, and you, you didn't read your, your old absorption spectrum. But in your old absorption spectrum, like, as, as it, uh, uh, poly, proti, poly, so one, yeah, propylamine is fine. I mean, looks like you don't have, which, at least I don't have, which is added. And for acid nitrile, right, so your uh, spectra was, the fire was, yeah, yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't remember exactly what the structure, but, but like 
Whole something like that, right? Yeah. Data With really low temperature. transitions here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the red ones were also having all low transitions, but they start somewhere, let's say, three electron volts versus two and a half electron volts. Yeah. I don't remember exactly the values, but yeah, yeah, so this was yeah, silate, right? and this was sile. Now, if we look, and this was in this solvent, right? If you look on your doors, so this is your acetonitrile, this is acetonitrile. Yes. And I would, so how do you go? I would go, I really like how you did it here, right? Like you put it in a, and I would suggest you should put your A here, right? here. So it's clear, right? I like how you did it here. I would suggest you do it, well, here, if you can, but here again, uh, reorganize it, and you can also make it as two columns, right? Uh, I've okay. seen it in because you can do this way, kind of open. So maybe reorganize it so you will have A and B as a column, and then C and D as a column. And then this would be from, and, and you will hold the same kind of, well, your A and B probably has to be here. And don't forget to add A and B because here you refer to some. Yeah, the results had to make yeah. two features, so it's like yeah. you have A and B, but you don't have A and B. Oh. <laughs> so then it's very confusing. Yeah. 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 What, is, what is A and B? But anyway, um, yeah, so this one you can probably yeah, organize, but go back to the issue which we have. So if you look, uh, we are comparing, we are comparing this versus that, it's the same solvent, right? Yeah, so how the dissolution? Yeah, I'm sorry, you changed it gray, because the gray is Right, and I had to have it here. Um, and okay. maybe change green to the blue so again, you know, yeah, color blind or something. Um, stay on shoulders and cool jams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does make sense. Uh, for your style, because technically what happens in a scene, am I true that in a scene, you said in a scene, it's trial, if you start with style, it stays style. No, it goes to style, it's the conversion from style. Then it stays style. So, because it looks like because you have a conversion here, right? So it looks like we have really a lot of them converting. Like, like this is this is really you have majority of them being style and a little bit in between, right? Yeah. Not completely disattaching. This is what we call the network, right? Yeah. Uh, here it looks like you have really majority of them converting to the side rate, right? And here they stay silate, that's why you have such a big peak here. Yes. And, and he is much smaller, right? So, so we understand the doors. And then this also explains why your band gap, like if you look from here to here, and of course you can look on the actual values to have your band gap. Um, by the way, you probably can show this band gap. Say HG equals, and then whatever your number. Okay. Why not? Why not? <laughs> because then it's clearly telling me that this would be smaller than this one. Yeah. And, and the same here. And this will be very comparable. So do I just take the first one up then? Hmm? Or do I just take the first one up this one? No, no, you need to take this value from actual okay. band gap, right? So it means you need to go to your Pomodium or orbital energy, right? Yeah. And then put it exactly because this is because we widen it, like it's kind of, and, and you can make it large or small, right? You can dress it with light beads or small beads, it's really a parameter. Yeah. So that's why this age is kind of very different. But pomodium energy, this is what exactly. And again, this is why it's not so easy to figure out what would be exactly the number because of this uh, dressing thing. Right? Yeah, that makes uh, sense. The, the widening uh, due to the Gaussian curve. So, and I still didn't sense it. You know, it will work to your request. You can run to it. I really feel like, should you? I mean, it's really not for your DR. Also, for the Ketheritius, right now I just use the gamma ball. So for this kind so of case, like like but, but you can do it much better anyway. I, right? I can train. Yes, I can do okay. it much better now. It was the, 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 the old review of, of the product uh, world that I hadn't uh, gone over. So okay. Anyway, uh, yeah. So put put this in. Put kind of arrow for for defining what exactly you mean by that. Okay. Uh, so what I'm saying. So now you will see that yeah, here the band gap is higher than this one. And I think in your absorption spectra, that's why you have your black curve in the problem is being shifted to the blue, mm -hmm. and this one shifts to the red. And if you remember, your red were really very small in intensity, and your black were high in intensity. Yeah. And again, because it's more delicate character, we don't have really 
like these green ones, they're really localized, and this is what you show in your structure here, right? Yeah. So for your siles are laid, they're really sitting just on a, on a molecules, right? Here they have some contribution to your quantum. Okay. Yeah. And acid and nitrile is the same, very trap state, and here it's really on the quantum neutral, and this is very delicalized. Well, your electrons look like they're delicalized, but your Oh, and for this paper, and again for paper, like for post, I, I said I like the thing. But for paper, okay. there might be a difference because you might ask why they have a different. So probably makes the same, uh, the same, the same color scheme for both or whatever for for A. So I guess I'll just organize the data so I can show it to you. Yeah. Because there might be an issue right away. They would say, oh, why is it green? Why is it green? I would say, just traditionally, probably better to show the same, the same one. And you can play with, I don't know, you know how to do all the transparent? Um, yeah, it's just a I kind of like transparent. I know some students don't like the Bible saying that it's not. Doesn't think it really helps. Okay. So I don't know, but you can play and you decide by yourself. And also, um, I would say in your case, because your, your goal is to maximize, to kind of really to, to take all the white space, right, and really maximize your figure. So it looks like if you increase, it looks like you have this a lot of white. So if you increase it, really taking the whole thing, mm -hmm. you still your image probably will take this this this, this much, right? Mm -hmm. So it looks like it probably still too small. It's really hard to see what's going on with these atoms. Okay. Because here you really want to see where they are located. So do you want me to? That's why I'm kind of thinking maybe in this case is, I mean I, I like this propyl acid and nitrile columns, but maybe in this case if you align them not this way but that way, maybe you can like this helps you to increase. Then then you will really can take the whole page okay. and you will have better increase rather than putting it there. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe 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 you still. I'll do it both ways. Yeah, yeah. Like but again, you you understand your goal, right? Yeah. And I would say <laughs> if you go to this one, <laughs> since it's exactly the same caption, you can skip this, right? Yes. And you can decrease mm -hmm. decrease the spacing, so put them closer. And maybe you can really just put it. You can really put them one by one side, right, and just make this double, yeah. double, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. double line, right, well, and then here it would be all yeah. yeah, and this would be a mean, and this is again your A, and this is your, if you think of it this way. So this helps you to to take all this extra white space, yeah. and then you make them wider, and this probably will be enough to kind of make you really, like, for your figures, nothing wrong, because we all, like, actually, all of them well seen. This one is not so much important, although I would probably also suggest to take larger. So that's uh, I mean, you just need to increase it. Yeah. Um, okay. Because your reviewers, they will read your paper not in the form of the final size uh, aligned yes. paper in the columns, as they usually publish in the papers, right? They will really see what this draft. Okay. This is what we are submitting. I mean, I know some people, like you, of course, if you want to, you can put them already in a column, in the exact style as required for the journal. But ACS journals are not so much picky, and this probably will go to John Peace for Chemistry C, at least, uh, as, 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 as a low score. You, you might try, I, I don't know, you might try higher than this. Um, and they usually don't require anything. So it means you really can have one page, one figure. And caption, right? So don't yeah. don't split figure from caption. Okay. But you can really like you don't need to have. I was just trying to keep them small. I don't. don't. Really know uh, I mean, and again, it looks like this size really works, right? This size works. Even this one is working. Yeah. Means they can I really to make them clear. But 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 again, to make your review a life easier, so they will not go this way. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's no any limit, so you can. I would I would suggest have figure one, page one, figure two, page two, and even if you have such a small figure, make it huge. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> then a caption, not a big deal. So so just go with lesson drawn, as I said, because this is showing that yeah, you still you kind of. Probably in a in a real actual size, they will be having this size, right? Yeah. And they clearly see. Yes. But for reviewer purpose, so they will not spend it. So kind of like this. Fig one, then fig two. This will be your fig. 
Okay, the next page. Okay, returning back to, our, to my question. So as I said, so these orbitals, they are delocalized, right? As we already said, definitely much more than quantum dollar. So that's why this transition, and delocalized means your, this is quantum dollar state, right? Quantum, and all of them is on the quantum. Yes. So your electron is on the quantum dot, and your pool is kind of, here it's on the ligands, right? Yes. Uh, when we calculate the optical transition, the, the, dipole mode, the transition dipole mode, oh, it's really well. You take it pretty fast, so maybe you will be not so much surprised with these notations. No? It is what was in today's class, which I was. Uh, I was not there. <laughs> <laughs> but you can be recording it, it was exactly on this notation. For this purpose. So, so, roughly, I mean, uh, technically it has to be connected through. Well, uh, so, this gives you this so intensity, this gives you your pulse your your peaks, which you're showing the actual band, right? They're coming from this notation. And yes. what does it tell you? You take the orbital, right, mm -hmm. which depends it's on so R, or if you want and you take another orbital, which depends on H. Mm -hmm. And you okay. will over, like, then you will, right. the in other words, this is the same as you just personal. take integral. Okay. And establish better good relations for working together. Yeah. Like this, which of them depends on R. Yeah. You can also multiply by R. Wherever your function depends on R, I is in this case X, Y, Z. So if you scan and send it. So it's a uh, space vector, right? They are uh, appreciated and established better connections for last wise. Yeah. And you, if you know how it looks like, in other words, you know the function depending on R, which you can visualize that it has a point and some function. Uh, technically, you can take the integral, you also can say it's kind of overlap, well, multiplied by R. So if this wave function is localized on this part, and this wave function localized on a completely different part, so like overlap, when you take this integral, it's really kind of overlapping this orbit, right? They definitely will have no any overlaps. Well, you have a little bit on this, or maybe it's, no, it's sulfur quantum dot. Again, that's why I said that you need to increase it because it's hard to see. Yeah. Looks like you probably have a little bit on this surface, right? And this one having a little bit on that surface. Mm -hmm. But definitely, this is negligibly small, so when you overlap these orbitals, the overlap is almost zero, right? Because they are sitting completely on different parts. If you overlap these orbitals, because they're already taking the quantum dot and the ligands, and this is only quantum dot, but the whole top thing of the quantum dot will be overlapping, means you will have a value of the integral. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's why this guy will be having larger value and your peak will be higher uh -huh. than that one or that one or that one, right? Where you, especially that one because they completely localized things that have nothing on the surface. Right? Yeah. This is a little bit, and again, this is a little bit, but this is almost nothing. So that's why I would say, just looking on your doors, we expect because this is delocalized, mm -hmm. so your loss transition will have some portion on the quantum dot, as we already see here. And this transition should be optically active, means this transition type of moment, the overlap between orbitals is not zero. Mm -hmm. Here, it's it's clearly on a quantum dot, complete, uh, on a, on a, mm, a ligands completely, right? No, no contribution on the back, mm -hmm. negligible contribution on the back. And again, we see it's a little bit, but we won't it, right? But this one is on a quantum So this transition from green to, to red mm -hmm. will have your dipole transition dipole moment being only zero. Yeah, and that's what we saw in the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then those which are bright probably will come at high energy, red to red. Mm -hmm. And that's why for your uh, propylamine, you have your black curve for science, blue shifted, compared and, and high intensity, rather than silate their red shifted, less energy. And they have smaller, smaller intensity, because this gap is probably also smaller than that one. That makes sense now? Um, okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, no, I can open your figures, make it super easy. Or you remember how to do it. Oh, I know. Uh, this, is, this is how they look. And then this one is but this is who I see. Uh, I see yeah. I'm talking about propylamine, okay. where we don't have problems. But I'm just explaining okay. why, Got it. why I like your propylamines and have no yeah. issues with that. <laughs> or maybe it was the device calculations, but I have issues with your. Uh, I see the new trial, right? Yeah. So, does it make sense now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, and this is, this is what we call trap state, right? Because yes. they're really localized and these transitions are optically inactive or very, very deeply optically active. Mm -hmm. Plus, gap here is larger than this one, so you expect it to be red shifted lower energy, yes. uh, low intensity versus this one. Right. Yeah, this is, just this, collecting that. Edge. This is we have, but, but I think I'm, I'm wrong. And I'm, well, it's not very big difference, but we compare this with that. Yes. But it's much the same story. Now, when we go to these guys, mm -hmm. on one hand, you say, well, the gaps looks probably they look very much the same. Well, again, you need the, you yeah, need the, the numbers, but values, roughly but speaking, you have almost one, almost one. I would say they're kind of the same. Maybe, maybe this is a little bit larger. That does look larger, yeah. This is, like, this is like one and a half, and that one's almost at one. But they start at But they're not larger by one electron volt, right? They're just by a little bit larger. No, but even yes. if this is well, again, that's why yeah. values would be uh, yeah. useful. But even if they're larger, they're probably larger by 0. I don't know, two electron volts, maybe three electron volts, right? Yeah. It's not like one electron volt. Which means that, and again, we expect that your lowest transition should be optically inactive in both cases. Yeah. And so that's I did true. see the literature. And the they're way. low, huh? but the, the problem literature? is that oh. you have really almost. I'm just kind of mad. I didn't think of that. Like, Dual like in myself. You have almost one electron volt difference. Between like, this first yeah, transition optically right? Yeah. And that transition. And this is what I don't understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why is it so much yeah. blue shifted I'd for already it there. Like, well, Looking on your doors, I would say, uh, well, you maybe, again, we need well, numbers. Better than the regular like It's a little bit larger, which might expe explain yeah. something. Mm -hmm. But on my, from my perspective, they are just a little bit larger. Yeah, not, not yeah, one electron volt difference, right? Yeah. Although, check, uh, I guess it's not one electron volt. But here they have oh, really right. one electron volt difference. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. another thing mm -hmm. is, this is showing your three electron volt yeah. transition, right? Mm -hmm. If you look on your gap, it's probably less than three. I think I really looked at mm -hmm. actually trying to measure. But again, it's not very accurate because of this. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to get the actual. But, but again, if this band gap, is smaller than three electron volts. I mean, smaller than whatever your transition here, and I think it's really close to three electron volts. This mm -hmm. is where we have a problem because, uh, in the case when we say, like, your, this picture is a single particle, you, you have no really electron hole interaction, right? All electrons on the homa, I mean, occupied states up to the homa, and it has nothing on the uh, on the on the conduction band of the unoccupied states on that side, right? Mm -hmm. So, so there is no electrical <laughs> interaction. When you do absorption spe spectra, you really excite. You take electron from the occupied state and you put it on the unoccupied state, creating a whole in a valence band, right? Because mm -hmm. you really have a lot of a lot of electrons, and one is missing. Is Washington or is he Washington? Whole. And create an electron in the states where you have no one was there before, right? No areas, and you put an electron there. Yeah. So you're creating this electron, and this is what we call whole. This is electron, right? This is how your orbitals look like. You should be different if you look on just ground state orbitals, homa, and ground state orbitals. So you do this, but we know that plus and minus, right? They interact through, through the interact these charges. Yeah, they are attracting. Attracting? Do you remember the formula? Uh, well, at least the sign. Uh, well, it's Q1 times Q2. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Right, and because Q1 is plus and Q2 is oh, negative. Oh, I start plotting orbitals. Well, actually, the symmetric since it's electron, it holds exactly the same charge. Like I don't know, those degenerate ones, they kind of vanish. It's charge of the electron, and this is equal to charge of the electron. I probably plotted a range of. And then it's at least phi, epsilon, minus. not. And there's only and R would one be the distance in the beta. Between yes. these charges, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what actually we call column interaction. Because it has a negative charge, and you said attracting, right? Mm -hmm. So wherever you have your energy for a uh, single electron, his his electron and hole. Right? He just like as you said, in the ground state there is no hole. There's no this term there. You have this energy and then you add this term to your Hamiltonian. Which which is minus, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because it's minus, it should make it smaller. So that's why you usually we have this is your un we call it uncorrelated gap. It's ground 
the state bank gap, mm -hmm. and your first excited transitions, your optical gap in your first excited transitions is somewhere here, right? So this would be energy for your optical. This will be mm -hmm. And how much is really smaller than your band gap dictated by how big this interaction is. In quantum noise, we expect that this, because of the screen, right, to have a lot. And the dynamic constant increases have more and more yeah, electrons because they screen each other. Yeah. Uh, they screen the, um, the, the, the positive charge of the nucleus, right? So in having elements such as cadmium, red, even selenium, right, those which you go to the bottom of the periodic table, the electric constant is higher because of the higher screen comparing to carbon or hydrogen, for example. And hydrogen is a small constant. So, and if this is large, then the overall term is small, right? mm -hmm. divided by a big number. So, yeah. so that's why we're not expecting that this guy is very high, is very large for cancel and either cancel five quantum dots. But it does make it small. But it has to be small, it cannot grow. Yeah. Right? So that's why I said it's important. Just looking on the first glance, I thought that this is smaller, less than three times the comparing to your voice transition. And this is what I said, I call looks strange. Well, and that's can, why I yeah. was asking you to recalculate. I think that uh, before we got left, that, mm -hmm. that that was the one we really like went over and did together. So that was why I was really confused. Mean you already that. recalculated? Um, yeah. Well, like when before he left, like mm -hmm. I ran through and did the calculations with him, like watching like every step making sure that I was doing right, and that was what I did it on. But so, now I would say don't look on your files. Yeah. Look on that on that file from mm -hmm. those like, when you those one which you use for projected doors. Mm -hmm. Of course, you need to take out the keywords for. Thank you. Um, the yeah, yeah. But you take exactly the same geometry mm -hmm. and use exactly the same settings for your yeah. functional basis sets, right? Yeah, yeah, I haven't changed any of the basis sets. Like, I like the uh, over the past month. Well, but I've just learning about it. Be yeah. sure, 100% sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and don't look on your structure, right. which right you now, don't look on the files which you use for these calculations yeah. because yeah. we have them. Yeah, because it's wrong. So uh, start with a scratch, really so use this as your initial it. thing and recalculate your TDD right? And then let's see, if you will have exactly the same thing, then you will start thinking. Because I think maybe there are some, maybe the structure was on the those one which you think, or maybe maybe something happened. Maybe it was not completely optimal. I mean, possible. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's possible. If he was kind of showing it to you, maybe it was not 100% optimized and he decided, oh, whatever. Just take the geometry <laughs> and I will show, yeah. show, show how it works, right? Okay. Okay. Good. But, uh, so looks, and mainly it was changing your captions. I don't know how much it's <laughs> easy to follow. I mean, I'll, I'll my things. Yeah. Yeah. But, but again, but the just kind of overall note, don't start that this image shows. Oh, okay. You just say natural transition, and we call it natural transition orbitals. Natural transition orbitals, right? Uh, if you to the and then you can go this one, right? So you, you don't, and you don't say, in the panel A we show, or something okay. like that. You just say A, and it's a statement, right? Yeah. Because this, I gotta this work saves, not adding it's, it's, it's a style, and you can see, like, this is all other things, figures which, uh, especially those who are experienced students, graduate students, yeah. have, right? So yes. they have this different style, because it saves, saves spacing. And again, we don't want to have figure taken half of the page. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, so this is for you, and I have um, uh, all your donations here. Doing on on Friday for this? Mm -hmm. oh, what are we doing on Friday for this? Which is we will be having presentation, for, well, for finished presentation of John. Okay. I don't know when did you come. It was already um, finishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had very bad connection, yeah. and that's why we have to stop. Um, so we have John presentation and Levi presentation on his introduction, uh -huh. and. I th no, no, and I, I, I and may maybe, maybe if we will have time, we will finish those things which we didn't finish for other students. Okay. So I, but I, I don't need Friday. to have this updated for Friday. Oh no! Okay. It's I was like, oh my gosh! Well, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> this is for next Tuesday. Okay. So and it's a Tuesday like, after break then. <laughs> or next Tuesday. Well, go on your schedule. I would say we probably can use break to really wrap up everything. Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what I have going on, but I think I can at least try and get a decent amount done on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, these are for Austin and Megan. They're not here. But figures really good. Thank you. Yeah. Try, try. Yeah, they're um, very nice. I mean, overall band, presentation of figures. I have really a few things that are pretty to close really to right? I have very so many and then two that are um, things. Yeah, but these are the two that I want to work this out for me? No, it's okay because I have nothing. 
that oh, I'm, 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 I'm too small. I don't know if Dimitri is able to do yeah, many of them at once. Uh, okay. Probably pay too much attention to each other. Well, I mean, women. <laughs> it's probably. <laughs> And he's so more like just a woman in general. Is it somewhere? Yeah. Does it seem to be smooth? Oh, and, and um, the figure where you have bonds, right? Uh -huh. I was confused with your, completely confused with your notations because I didn't really figure out which one is which one, which bond is Should which one. Should I put one. the little picture? That I think I have you need no, not the picture, maybe the legend. Okay, that sounds good. And actually, the picture, the illustration of your network, uh -huh. as you have in your poster, yeah. would be useful and you can use it. I mean, maybe we can do it as a separate figure, mm -hmm. or maybe you can add it to, to some other figures, like for example, where you have to you charge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can show it because it's a really small figure. You can add another panel uh, for a schematic project. representation of your yeah. network. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh. But, but this will be easy for people to understand what you're talking about. I will give it to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you Thursday then, right? Are you coming? If it's for your students, which would? Oh, not here. Oh, thank you so much. Or maybe not for you, I don't know which students. Austin and Wanda, yes. Yes, yes. Ask Canada call.